Good morning you lovely lot, how you doing? It's Friday, so here is the Friday Ascension update and the sun is coming up behind me and uh, when I first came outside this morning it was misty but it's very quickly lifted and I think it's actually touch wood or touch, yeah touch wood it's going to be a nice sunny day in the south of England Now, I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about identities or or kind of the big kind of shift in in kind in self actualization that we're all experiencing at the moment one thing i'd like to clarify first of all is what my understanding of the word monad is now i've had a few emails over the last couple of weeks just saying what what's a monad especially from those of you that are living in europe and you're not maybe quite so familiar with with the the english lingo but a monad, by my understanding, is a, it's, the, the way to describe it is a super soul or an over soul or the original initial soul personality. So if you look at what we are, we are kind of personalities or representations of this, this huge kind of super consciousness that is, is kind of gathering or collecting information. Now, Another way of describing it would be if you imagined all of these amazing personalities in in one room and then you merged them all together with their different knowledges and their di and, and their, their different commitments and their different kind of um, aspects of learning over many incarnations and then you would have a monad what the monad's job is it, it, it's it's to gather as much information as possible from the from the quantity of incarnations that have been sent out and that's not just on earth that's in any any kind of given point in the universe so from the monad you will get 12 main soul personalities and it's the, the joshua david stone described them as fingers of fire that that come come down they're, they're, they're born and then from that from each of those 12 per the um, major major kind of soul energies more are born so these are what we are actually representing at the moment we are representatives of those those personalities but the interesting thing is well and what i've seen over the years is many of us are kind of remembering and connecting with our past lives our past personalities especially the ones on earth that are the ones that are significant that come up for us to clear and we have of course been different people in different bodies and different times having different experiences but at the end of those incarnations we go back to the same the, the same source of energy the same soul home and it's it's like we hand out we hand over our goodies this is you know hello this is what i've learned you know that was an interesting incarnation don't particularly want to go back down there again but i might have to you 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 get the kind of drift with that so this this is this is how i understand and feel the the monad or the monadic presence it is the aspect it's when we say your higher self or your highest self that is the energy that that I am talking about or we are talking about so this and that that brings me on to the subject of how powerful the soul triggers are when we meet people on our ascension pathway at the moment now over the particularly since the cosmic moment since we've we've had all of this um in huge increase of energy going on since 2012 and we're now in this this amazing fast moving corridor of shifting energy which which you know if you want to put it in a box and label it it's the fourth dimension it's the turbulence as we're going from the shift from 3d to 5d we are in the process of releasing all of the kind of the the burdens the karmic agreements the the soul contracts that we have and when we've done that or when we're in the process of doing it and we've we've achieved the majority of it then we begin to connect with our soul family. Now, a lot of the time, I mean, these tri these triggers are they are strong because these are people that we are actually directly late related to on a soul level, 
or that we've served with in past lives like one of the biggest ones that I saw back in particularly in 2014 and 2015 is um, all of the Atlanteans recognising each other. Now, of course, we're rolling out an Atlantean blueprint at the moment. This is what we have got for our future. So naturally, the, <coughs> the whole Atlantis thing has been very, very powerful, particularly in releasing the trauma that was associated with the fall and also the fact that we're now releasing the old kind of darker, denser aspects of why Atlantis fell and how the power was handed over and... If you, if you want to know a little bit more about that, kind of watch some of my previous videos where I've been talking about how we are seeing a reflection in, our, in, the, in the kind of like the, the, the turbulence in our society at the moment is simply the end days of Atlantis playing out as a blueprint with the same people who, are, who were in power then having to hand their power back over now. That's what all the fuss is about, basically. That's, that's why society looks like it's 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 trying to kind of maintain its its grip on grip on the ascension process while we're all breaking out and flowering into a state of higher consciousness so when we release that uh, it's 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 a it's a set of lessons and initiations that are contained within the sacral all of our all of the ballast and all of the agreements particularly people in our lives that that we that were there previously that aren't going to match our vibration they drop away you've heard you've, you've heard me talk about this before and are replaced with our soul family now there is nothing more supportive than people who are completely on the same energy wavelength as you people that you've you've basically served with before you know very well energetically and meeting those people creates triggers so when you hear the term meeting your soul family, that is exactly what you are doing at the moment. And the second they start to gather around you, you know that you're on the right pathway and that you're going to be fully and completely supported. You know, it's, um, I think it was a term that came through to me quite a few years ago, which was spirit runs thicker than blood. Now you've all heard the earthly term, blood runs thicker than water. Well, spirit runs thicker than blood because at the end of the day, your soul family, those that are here around you, that are here to sub literally be by your side energetically or physically for every step of your ascension mission, are the ones, they are the ultimate fortification. If you haven't met them now, you will do. And if, if, it's, if you've chosen a pathway that tends to be a little bit more kind of isolated than others and understand that energetically they are around supporting you as well. So that's that's one part of what i want to speak about but the other part is the way that we are particularly having our previous sense of identity literally stripped away when this process occurs like it is i mean it, it, it's it's happening quickly it's <laughs> it's happening quite it's it's almost like it's, it can be a little bit brutal the speed at which it occurs and that's what I am seeing kind of a pattern with with many of you beautiful souls out there at the moment particularly the ones that are kind of like more starting this pathway it's, it's you know walking into this at the moment it's like a jump start it's been like woken up with a set of jump leads basically when you're really not ready to do so and that's when the old, old kind of aspects of the personality are just stripped away very very quickly so what you thought you were initially what you thought was your identity what you thought was you know oh that's me i i'm i'm a real estate agent or i i i do this all of a sudden that's that's taken away and it's been taken quite possibly been taken away by the circumstances that we're experiencing and the reason why that happens is because we are being placed on a pathway at the moment where the only thing that resonates with the highest reality is our soul mission so all of this stripping down all of this kind of breaking away all of this cutting of cords all of this what appears to be loss initially in actual fact is simply preparation for something which is indescribably better once we've actually found what that thing is and start actualizing it in our in our lifetime so this Again, it's another, it's another facet of why people are finding it so incredibly challenging at the moment. I know lots of you 
out there who are actually directly connected to people who are for want of a better word really really struggling at the moment and this this goes it goes across the board it goes across the board with um the souls that are directly involved with 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 working in in the mainstream kind of aspects of health and also those that have, have that are, are kind of been set up for years as healers and and just simply ears to listen to it's becoming very turbulent okay so this this is at the point where we batten down we really kind of like put our feet on the ground stay grounded and just provide as much of ourselves as we possibly can within reason to guide whoever is coming to us in in a in in, in a linear state and just and just be there be be as be as a higher aspect of ourself as we possibly can be and uh, of course it, it goes straight into the, the 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 conversation i had about the other day about no save no rescue we are we are guiding we are ushering this process at the moment it's um it's a very finely tuned very delicate thing to be achieving because on one side of it we are being called fully into our our master roles whatever that might be and at the same time we've got to be treading very very carefully that we're not interfering too much in other people's processes and how they actually achieve their own but we're very well trained to do it we've, we've we've been spending lifetime after lifetime preparing for what we are going through at the moment so you might be listening to this going you know and thinking to yourself like well what is my role these <laughs> ducks are really noisy yeah what what is what is my role you know what what is what is my true identity and your true identity is manifesting the as much of your highest self or your highest self in this reality as you possibly can do so all of that soul energy all of that monadic energy is coming down through to you now the higher you vibe the clearer you are the more of this real you that you begin to manifest now for most of us this feels like a it, the, the the changeover process can be very jarring depending on how um how tightly or how hard we are clinging to this this previous version of ourselves and sometimes it just drops gently away or on other occasions it's got to be something that is it's stripped down over a period of time and that that's when people become very worn out they become very distressed and not necessarily kind of aligned with the experiences that they're having so we ultimately are all becoming our higher selves we are becoming we are here to represent our monadic energy as best as we possibly can with the physical representations that we are so when you know there's, there's a little affirmation i love reminding myself of particularly on days where i might wake up feeling a bit a bit cruddy or not quite in aligned it's it's i always say this to myself three times or as many times as it rolls through my head i am my highest self i am my highest self i am my highest self not just my higher self but my highest self the highest version of myself that is available to me at this time second you do that the energy starts coming down your antikarana bridge and it anchors into your base chakra now the base chakra has been it, it's 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 one of these overlooked chakras because everybody's interested in the ones in in the all the high frequency stuff coming coming in and i i, I spent years doing that I spent years kind of like just gleefully bringing all of this high frequency light into my stellar gateway, opening up my soul star to see what my past life gifts and talents were, um, marvelling at how my causal chakra above the top of my crown would expand and exponentially when all of the moon energy came in. But as soon as we started getting into the physical chakras, which is where the hard work is, it's like, you know, it's like, all right, okay, I'll leave, the, I'll leave that till next week until you actually get down to the the sacral and the base and that's where the toughest tests and the toughest lessons always lie spoke about the sacral just now that involves kind of you know the 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 activation of the fifth dimensional sacral is what will bring your your 5d relationships into play the 3d sacral 
holds all of your 3D versions of those relationships and, and most of them were very 3D. Uh, friends, family, partnerships, you know, even how you relate to your boss. But the base, okay, the base is a different matter altogether. Now, a lot of you will be familiar with the old color of the base and it's pretty much like the, the you know that, that red on red on my check shirt it was bright red okay the old the old 3d base was bright red and when the 5d chakras came in which they did very very quickly the the, the color of the base became platinum so i have not seen for a good number of years anybody who has still got that red color within their base chakra and um Quite often there's a bit of an overlay, okay? When, when, the, when the blueprint of the, the 5D chakras came down, the, the aspects of the, the 3D base didn't completely disappear, so you could still see red shining through the platinum. But with what's going on at the moment and the way that the frequencies have jumped, we're so far away from that 3D energy now that none of, none of this residual energy is left. We are simply left with, with kind of patterns of behavior that are rooted in the 3D base. So it's a very different thing. So if you were going to work with your base chakra, what you are doing is you are anchoring your highest aspect of your personality, the part of you that is, is the shiniest, the brightest, the, the most grounded, the most high frequency. And it's funny because uh, you could you could spend a week and say say like a, a week doesn't sound like a very a long time seven seven days, but the way that we're being pushed at the moment like very very hard, you can go through two upgrades in the space of seven days. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure all of you will be like, yeah yeah yeah, I can resonate with that. They're not particularly easy. They're not particularly easy. They can be quite jarring. They can be quite emotionally tumultuous and even physically sometimes put us on our bums so we can't do anything but every time we go through that upgrade process we go down we clear we 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 integrate new energy and then we rise again every time that happens a new aspect of our highest self or you know the 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 energy that is the brightest and the highest that personality anchors into our base chakra and it is, a, it is the seat of our soul. It is the seat of our mastery. So once we've navigated this whole, what am I really? Well, you know, that's obviously not what I was. What am I here to do? And, and quite often it's just a case, it has to be a case of trust because the, the actual picture of you in your master role might not be completely visible yet, but what you've got to try and do, which is easier said than done, is actually visualize yourself just in the highest vibration possible, doing the job that you've incarnated to do. And once you've made that commitment energetically, once you start anchoring in the highest aspect of you into your base chakra and manifesting that mastery, actually taking control of your ascension process rather than it controlling you, then that is when the base starts to really shine and it stops pushing us through all these continuous initiations where we're we're questioning our reality, questioning what we're supposed to be doing here, and ultimately questioning whether we're actually even supposed to be on the spiritual pathway in the first place. And it's um, the, that that's another one. It's, it's it's been coming up a lot recently. It's like, can I go back to sleep again, please? Because it's it's actually it's um, once you've activated this process, there's no. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard the term or not. There's no, there's no there's no. Um, Un, unread pilling yourself you can't then take the blue pill and go, <laughs> go back to sleep go go back to sleep again it's um it's a it's a, a funny old process and we are moving through it so fast at the moment i'm loving this february energy at the moment this february energy feels very it feels very balanced and and very calm like i've said previously in 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 previous recordings uh there are two very distinct realities that you can pick at the moment. You can pick the the kind of the one where all of the turbulence is occurring, or you can pick the one that that is is highly supportive of the way that we are being literally pushed pushed through this corridor of very very fast moving energy. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 genuinely excited to see and experience what's coming up this year. And uh, 
yeah monday monday diana cooper and i are going to be focusing on the event where we are talking about the golden children and on on thursday carolyn bennett and myself are presenting the last in our series of three of ascension essentials so next week's going to be a good week for online workshops and other bits and pieces so if, if you're joining us that would be lovely to see you there but i'm going to bid you all farewell Happy Friday. Hope you have a beautiful start to the end of the week and a beautiful weekend and uh, I will talk to you all soon. Lots of love. Bye for now.